The audience is banned from any material that bears the name or symbol of a competing university. We ask that the audience exit the room immediately following the question and answer period. Competitors, you may begin when you are ready. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Sparks. We are TSC Consulting. My name is Emily. This is my colleague Tice and my colleague Scott. And we are here today on behalf of your, the Garrett Mountain Senior Management Team. We are thrilled to be here today. Um, we are, you're currently facing a very important decision um, with regards to where your company is going to go um, in this very volatile market. We have um, prepared a recommendation and we are going to walk you through this recommendation. And we believe this, this recommendation is going to help your company surpass its competitors as well as gain profitability and as well as, most importantly, achieve excellence. All right, so the decision that we have identified for your company um, is overall, should Garamond expand in Fort McMurray, so Western Canada? And we're going to uh, recommend to you um, to expand through purchasing a competitor. And we are going to go through more detail in just a moment here. So um, our agenda this afternoon, uh, we are going to start off talking with about some key success factors that will pull, uh, play a very important role in how you go forward with this, uh, with this decision. We are then going to go into the alternative analysis and discuss the, um, the three alternatives that you are looking at currently. Then we are going to go into a decision matrix that will weight um, all the criteria to um, really lay it out for you. Um, what is most important to you that we have identified and what will suit your company best. We will then go into an implementation and follow up with a contingency plan to address any risks. And then we will uh, conclude with uh, any questions that you might have about our presentation. All right, so the key success factors that we have identified um, in your business right now is long-term growth. This is very important because you are a, you're a very strong company and you want to make sure you can continue the success. You have uh, achieved what you want to in Ontario and Quebec. You have uh, met your target goals and we want you to continue doing that and to further expand that, those goals. Um, another very important factor to your company is your relationship with Komatsu. This is your um, your uh, provider for all of your services, it's the one of the largest ones in the world here. And you are the largest distributor for this um, in, in Canada. And this is a very um, important thing that you hold. And as well as profitability. As with any business, you want to make a profit on this decision. And we believe that with our recommendation, this is achievable. Um, and as well as risk. You are in a very volatile market currently with the, um, with the price of oil and going into Fort McMurray, this is something that we have addressed and we have really kept in mind because we know that this is, um, this is a riskier um, move and we want to make sure that you are aware of all um, of the risk and that we have um, provided some mitigations for this. All right, I am now gonna pass it off to my colleague Tice to discuss the alternatives. All right. So the first alternative that we identified or that you had provided for us was to, to build your own branded network of stores within uh, Fort McMurray. Uh, and then the second was exiting the market of Fort McMurray. And the third was increasing the rental store network through purchasing um, a competitor, uh, which is uh, an alternative that Scott will discuss with you. Um, so for building your own branded network, um, just looking at at the projections that you've given us, um, the the significant negative profit in the first three years uh, is is really worrying. For for all of these alternatives, we we looked at them through over over the scope of five years, just to 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 see how they compared. And um, looking at the first four years, the total undiscounted uh, profit in those years is something like negative twenty two point one million dollars. So. You would have to earn that much money in profit in, uh, in year <coughs> five just to get an undiscounted um, net profit over the five years of zero, uh, which is an unachievable number uh, in our opinion. So um, that the 
the, the negative profit here is a significant factor uh, against this. It's, and it just shows that it's a, it's a slow option to get started, which, which plays into the, high, into the, the risk of it. Um, because, because the market is volatile and you're not sure where the price of oil is going, um, it's, it's not a good plan to, to invest in something that's not going to, to pay off for you in the first in the first few years, or at least that you're not going to see see any benefit from it. You've got a negative profit in these first few years, uh, and then you're only achieving a little bit of profit in the fourth year. Anything could go wrong in those in those first three years, and then you're you're really uh, sort of out of luck with this option. Um, and then, additionally, even just looking at your your tenth uh, year projection, the the growth at that point at that point it looks um, it looks healthy, but it, for just considering how long it's taken you to get there, um, compared to your other options, it's not as high a growth option uh, as you might like for for the amount of risk that it carries and um, and just sort of what you have to assume in those first three years um, if you chose to go forward with this. Uh, for the second option, exiting the market, um, we've got a couple of key assumptions uh, that played into the calculations for this. Uh, first was that you had a tax rate of 30%, which was calculated based on uh, earnings before tax and net income. Uh, just comparing those two, we found that a uh, 30% tax rate was appropriate. Um, and that uh, the 10% the market decline that you expect in 2016 is going to, to continue over the course of these five years. We decided to keep it like that, not necessarily because that reflects what's going to happen, but because we don't know what's going to happen. And um, we, we'd like to keep the estimate conservative just to see sort of what the worst case scenario is for you and how that impacts you. Um, so that's why we decided to keep the market declining for these years. Um, so just to, just to get your estimates from where you had given them to us, because you gave them to us sort of as a best case scenario uh, for the next five years. We took the, just to get them to, to where we wanted them, to get them in sort of a, a more worst case scenario, uh, we took the projected 2015 <laughs> revenue, we backed up the 15% increase that you had uh, projected on, onto your 2014 <coughs> revenue to find that number, and then we took out another 20% because that's the, uh, the estimated market decline for, uh, for 2015 um, to get you a new revenue. Uh, next, we rewrote your um, your sort of pro forma income statement that you gave us with these new uh, new calculations. As mentioned before, the revenues um, decrease at 10% over the years. We didn't change anything about your expenses. We didn't see anything to, to change. Um, so, and then subtracting the two numbers gets you your EBITDA. Um, we didn't for uh, depreciation and amortization. We didn't see any reason that that would change. So um, the difference between IBIT and IBITDA didn't change there. So um, that's how we got those numbers. And then because you're running a loss in each year, uh, there would be actually a tax recovery, which we talk about in the next slide. But that gets you your net income. And the reason that the net income is relevant in this situation is because if you decide to back out of the market, these are the losses that you're going to save. Um, so you're, uh, you're sort of best case scenario um, analysis had income of uh, equal to a million dollars in 2019, but less than that in all of the other years. And then in this, in the worst case scenario, you're losing more than a million dollars in each year. So um, just, you can't keep operating as you're operating now because we believe it's reasonable to assume that you're going to be losing money. Um, on your operations in Fort McMurray. Uh, so next we'll just take a look at a few other financial considerations. Um, to get the net cash flows, we just put back the depreciation and amortization. Because um, net, I mean, cash flow is the most important thing uh, in business. So just looking at the cash flows, it's not quite as bad as what the, the net income is showing for you. Uh, it's still not something that you want to, to uh, discuss with your, your shareholders or anything. But additionally, the tax recovery um, on this loss will help you. Uh, overall, uh, you'll, you'll still be earning uh, a profit throughout your entire corporation, 
but um, just on this segment, I mean, the loss, the loss will mean that you pay less tax. So that's what that's supposed to represent. And then we also just calculated um, sort of the losses it, uh, of income as a percentage of the 2014 net income. That was the most recent net income uh, figure that we had specifically. Um, and just in the worst case scenario, uh, those percentages are what you lose uh, based on that number every year. And that's not what you want to take back to your shareholders, but keep in mind that operating in Fort McMurray for this time is sort of a, uh, something that you're doing for the long-term growth. It's not, you're not expecting profit in these, these years. Uh, so just looking at whether or not your, your company as a whole, your firm as a whole, can absorb the costs of operating in Fort McMurray in hopes that the price of oil does increase uh, in the coming years. Um, they're not. They're not dramatically lower than. than they're 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 absorbable. They're 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 costs that you can absorb, um, and it's not going to. It's not really gonna break the bank for you. So uh, even in the worst case scenario, you're not sort of entirely out of luck. Uh, so, I mean. Just regarding the, the key success factors, uh, for your long-term growth, exiting Fort McMurray does not provide you with any long-term growth, um, but it's not a risky option uh, because you, you would be getting that net income as we discussed on the previous slide. You'd be, uh, you wouldn't be incurring those losses right away and no investment and you could be selling, um, you could be selling the operations in Fort McMurray probably for the cost of assets. Uh, you don't have much liability, or you don't have much debt uh, involved in those two stores as of right now. So you could probably sell them for the six point eight million dollar uh, asset value, which you would get uh, at the same time, or at right now. And then uh, from there, yeah, it's um, it's not it's not risky. You get the money. There's no investment on your part, um, but there's no growth. Uh, and it could damage your relation with Komatsu because you'd be giving up your uh, your suppliership for Komatsu and Fort McMurray to your competitor Redwood. Um, so I'll pass it off to Scott to discuss the third option. Thank you, Tice. So as Tice mentioned, um, obviously your relationship with Komatsu is one of your most important assets that you have. You're the largest retailer of Komatsu equipment in all of Canada, and we want to make sure that you, you stay competitive in that field, um, as Komatsu is the third largest um, construction equipment manufacturer in the world. We want to make sure that you continue that relationship with them and continue to be profitable in the, in the key success factors that we've identified earlier. So uh, we're going to look at, uh, at the option of uh, purchasing one of the competitors in the Fort McMurray market. Uh, so the, um, the, lo the, the, the local chains that were targeted uh, and identified by, by uh, your board uh, were Transverse Rentals, uh, Caledon Center, and Vanguard Equipment Rentals. All three are very good options uh, in Fort McMurray. Uh, the Fort McMurray market is approximately 80 stores. Um, each of these, uh, these options has at least 15 or more stores uh, in, that, in that market. Um, the market share for each of them is quite high. I believe it's around uh, 25, between 25 and 40, almost 40%. 40 uh, between these, um, these uh, uh, competitors in that market. Um, so let's just go ahead and, uh, and have a look at uh, each of the options. So uh, first we'll look at transverse rentals. So they've got 15 locations in Fort McMurray, um, quite concentrated. Transverse is uh, a, a recent uh, entrant into the field, so they were um, they they came about uh, around the mid 90s. Um, they expanded by uh, purchasing um, high profit uh, or high profitable locally owned um, uh, owner operated stores. So um, they've had uh, aggressive growth in a short amount of time. Uh, they've got about a 30.46 percent local market share um, based on total revenue. I believe the total revenue in the Fort McMurray market alone is 280 million dollars. Um, and uh, so they've got they've got quite a large portion of that um, that market share. Uh, the the uh, I guess the thing that wouldn't uh, really fit as well with the Garamond business model though is that uh, forty percent of their uh, total market share in uh, Fort McMurray is uh, coming from equipment rentals, um, and and a large portion of it is uh, coming from either tool rentals or platform rentals, which currently Garamond is not in the business of. 
of providing to their customers. So um, it, it doesn't it doesn't exactly align perfectly uh, with with Garamond in that uh, in that way. So they've got uh, forty percent uh, equipment rentals, thirty two percent on the tool rental side, and twenty eight percent platform rentals. They also offer uh, Caterpillar and JD, JC brand uh, Bramford equipment. Um, those two um, manufacturers are the, the number one and number two largest uh, uh, equipment providers in, in, globally, and it might be difficult to get out of a relationship with those with those two um, equipment providers. Um, so uh, it's just something that might be a little tough to to, to mitigate uh, if we if we pursue the, this option. Uh, next, we'll look at Vanguard Equipment Rentals. Uh, they've got 15 locations in Fort McMurray, uh, just under 30% local market share. Uh, they, as well, provide equipment and tool rental. Um, however, uh, the information on um, the, the breakdown of each was, uh, was a little uh, difficult to ascertain. Um, and they, again, have Caterpillar and J.C. Bamford as their manufacturing partners. Again, that's going to be very difficult to get in and, uh, and provide the Komatsu um, equipment uh, within within that option. Uh, next, we'll look at the Caledon Center. So they've got 20 locations in Fort McMurray, plus the Greater Wood Buffalo region. Um, they've got about uh, just under 40 percent market share uh, for, of the local Fort McMurray market. Uh, they offer Caterpillar and Hitachi equipment. Again, Caterpillar is a number one um, uh, uh, manufacturing brand. For, uh, for construction equipment. However, Hitachi is only fourth uh, next to Komatsu. So it would be actually quite easy to um, get out of that relationship with Hitachi and uh, leverage your relationship with Komatsu to come in and, uh, and provide Komatsu equipment uh, at Caledon Center. Um, again, they're more in line with, that, with the Garamon business model of, of equipment uh, rentals. That's their main focus of what they provide uh, in, the, in the community. And they've got a much, much larger reach rather than just being concentrated uh, within uh, Fort McMurray itself. They're uh, more uh, dispersed throughout the greater Wood Buffalo region. So uh, we just uh, looked at um, some of the estimated financials that was provided uh, to, to our firm. And uh, just based on the, um, the pre-tax profits and uh, some uh, balance sheet information, just wanted to, uh, to put that up there for, for you folks to see where we're going to get the, uh, some of the financial ratio, um, financial ratio information uh, for each of these firms. So uh, as you can see, um, Caledon has a 7.9% uh, return on, uh, on assets and a 20% return on investments um, compared with Transverse and uh, Vanguard uh, and the various debt to equity ratios. I believe the debt to equity ratio right now for Garamond is around 1.6 and uh, you can see here the debt to equity ratio for Transverse and Vanguard um, on the low and the high end of that. and. Um, uh, uh, they're fairly, uh, fairly uh, close to Garamond's uh, um, uh, uh, operating debt to equity ratios. So um, again, just looking at the, the, the uh, pre-tax earnings for a business valuation, um, you can see between three and uh, seven times the pre-tax earnings for each of the, uh, each of the firms. And we're looking at uh, possibly going between the five and six times uh, pre-tax earnings based on the information provided. We, we understand that uh, um, they're looking for six to seven, six to seven times pre-tax earnings. We're to, suggesting possibly going with five times pre-tax earnings. Um, so we just set up a decision matrix here to show uh, the, the, the different uh, pillars that we used for the um, decision on, on which firm to buy. And as you can see, we've gone ahead with Caledon uh, as the um, option to go with. And now I'll just hand it over to Emily to wrap things up. All right, so this is our decision matrix that we have come up with for you. Um, rating um, one being the lowest and five being the highest. So um, to increase rental store network and purchase through Caledon rated the highest. So that is what we have gone for with our decision for you. Our implementation is to um, immediately notify Komatsu that we are interested, enter into negotiations, hire and train seniors for your executive um, Alberta location and move Komatsu product into the new stores. So our implementation for long term is to analyze the economic situation and adjust for changes, um, to not lose sight of the core operations, and to continue to evaluate growth opportunities. Our contingency plan is, what if oil prices don't recover in five years? 
In that case, you have the ability to exit the Alberta market and sell off those assets, and you will, um, the risk in that is not that high for that. And um, what if Caledon won't sell? We have evaluated Vanguard, and that is also um, a profitable option, so we can consider that. Um, and that is every, our um, recommendation for you, and we would like to open the floor up for any questions. Now we'll go on to the question and answer period. I'll start off here. Um, so the one thing I noted with the three options, Caledon is the most expensive. Um, I'm wondering how much you think we're going to have to pay to acquire that, and then how would we pay for that? How would we raise the, the capital to do that? Um, as I showed earlier, I apologize, I breezed through that slide quite quickly. Um, the uh, the, op the uh, valuation that we, we decided upon was around uh, between the five to six times pre-tax earnings, which was approximately, uh, I believe, uh, mid-80 uh, million to low, uh, to I think $102 million. Uh, Komatsu um, uh, did, uh, or has agreed to extend uh, up to 70% of the, the value of that firm uh, as, a, as a revolving line of credit for you to uh, to um, borrow against to finance that purchase option and uh, and assist with cash flows and stuff and we believe that the uh, the remaining thirty percent uh, again should be uh, uh, based on the on the national operations from uh, Quebec and and Ontario should be able to be easily financed uh, through through that business. How are you going to pay for Um, we would implement the, um, a new hire and training system, communicate with them that there is um, changes that are going to be happening and keep in contact with uh, the previous management and make sure we are aware of um, their values and what's important to them and do our best to um, integrate that into our own and accommodate them and make them feel um, as welcome as possible. Uh, one of the comments you made is if, uh, your, if the oil price does not recover in five years, it will be easy to exit from this situation. It might be easy. Um, what do you think the financial implications should be? Um, well, by purchasing Caledon, you'll have access to their assets and their liabilities, but after paying off their liabilities and selling off their assets, you'll still have uh, approximately $85 uh, million worth of, of benefit there. So it's certainly less risky than the, than the option of setting up your own stores because you have that, that buffer. Um, and um, just... Yeah, that's that's one of the one of the things. Okay. I have a quick question. So if we go ahead with this acquisition, um, what are the effects on my balance sheet gonna be? How does the accounting look like for this type of a transaction? Um, I believe you'd have to um, do a consolidation of the um, uh, the, the the existing chain into the into the Garamond um, uh, financials as well. Um, the uh, when when we were looking at the the profitability of between the the, the different options, uh, the reason that we chose Caledon is because it had uh, more um, uh, the financial ratio analysis was more more closely attuned to with what Garamond's uh, current performance is um, and uh, uh, the the returns on I believe the the returns on equity and assets were were roughly similar as well. So. Um, it, I don't think it would have a, a very big um, uh, uh, impact on, uh, on, on the financials, uh, and then you would be adding an immediate, I believe it was 17.1 million uh, pre-tax income uh, to the Alberta operations right off the bat. If negotiations don't go as well as we hope, we're going to end up in that six range and they ask for seven. Do you see any alternative structuring in terms of the deal that could be done to help you uh, allow a bit higher multiple? 
Um, you could look at um, either doing a, um, uh, a valuation based on the fair market value of the assets for, for, the, for the business. Um, you could also uh, look at maybe doing a, uh, a discounted future cash flows model as well uh, based on, um, on their, on their uh, pre-tax earnings. And that would actually give you a, a lower valuation. Unfortunately, I don't have that calculation uh, with me. Thank you.